I. Contrary to what many people think, sharks have excellent eyesight. A shark's eye can see well during the day and also at night when many sharks feed. Shark's eyes are built very much like human eyes, except that they are much thinner. The shark eye is composed of three chambers, an iris, a lens, and a retina. The size of the eye depends on what kind of shark it is and where it lives. Sharks that live in shallow waters where there's plenty of light have smaller eyes. They don't need to capture a lot of light in their eyes to see. Sharks that live in deeper waters, such as the mako shark, have much larger eyes to capture as much light as possible. To help see in very dark water, sharks also have a special reflective lens that is located at the back of their eyeball just behind the retina. This lens acts like a mirror, reflecting small amounts of light in the shark's eye many times over. It is believed that most sharks see in black and white, but it's possible that a few sharks also see in color. Ears are not found on the outside of sharks or on any other fishes. However, sharks still have very good hearing, particularly for low-frequency sounds like those made by struggling fish. The shark's ear consists of a small membrane of skin that is attached to a spot near the top of the head. This piece of skin moves every time there is a vibration in the water. Snout One of the shark's most highly developed senses is its ability to smell. A shark's nostrils consist of two small nasal sacs that have no internal connection to the mouth or throat. These nasal sacs are made up of very tiny rows of folded skin, which can detect even the tiniest quantities of certain chemicals in the water. Some sharks are able to smell one molecule of blood in a billion molecules of seawater. This is quite helpful for sharks that feed at night and must track the scent of an injured fish for long distances in murky water. A shark's other remarkable sense is its ability to detect very weak electrical currents in the water. The shark does this by using tiny receptors called ampullae of Lorenzini that are hidden just under the skin of a shark's snout. These receptors are made of jelly-filled canals connected to the surface of the skin by tiny sunken cups that look like small pinpricks. Using these receptors, a shark can detect the tiny electrical field created by an animal in the water. It is also believed that sharks use their electrical receptors to find out where they are in the water in the same way that people use compasses to know which direction to go. Mouth A shark's mouth is perfectly suited to a lifestyle of hunting and eating. The shark's head and neck are covered with giant muscles that give a shark its powerful bite. The upper jaw of most sharks is only loosely connected to the shark's skull. This allows many sharks to extend their upper jaw outward, thereby making it easier to take large bites out of their prey. A shark's teeth differ in size and shape, depending on the type of shark. The bull shark, for instance, has small teeth, which are good for chewing up crabs and mollusks. The great white shark has large serrated teeth that can saw off large pieces of flesh. Shark teeth are not attached directly to the jaw of a shark, as they are in many animals. Instead, the teeth grow in a groove known as a tooth bed, where they move from the back to the front. When broken or lost, a brand new tooth rotates up from behind in just a few days, replacing the lost or damaged tooth. Sharks have such powerful bites that they often break or lose teeth. Skin A shark's skin looks smooth, but is in fact very rough, like sandpaper. That's because the skin is covered with small tooth-like bumps called denticles. These bumps feel smooth when they are stroked from front to back, but feel very prickly when stroked in the reverse direction. Some people think that these bumps slow a shark down by creating friction with the water. Actually, the ocean water flows through channels between the bumps in such a way that they reduce friction, helping the shark to swim more efficiently. Unfortunately, many divers have gotten very bad scrapes from a passing shark whose skin rubbed them the wrong way. Before the invention of sandpaper, shark skin was widely used for an abrasive and for polishing. Running the length of a shark's body is a row of small receptors called the lateral line canal. This canal is made up of tiny sensors that detect small changes in the water pressure nearby. Without seeing or smelling a moving fish, a shark's lateral line canal would be capable of detecting its presence. Pectoral fin the shark's pectoral fins are flexible. They can be moved up and down to help steer the shark left and right and up and down. These fins also help communicate the kind of mood a shark is in. When the pectoral fins are in the downward position, the shark is in what scientists and divers call a threat posture. This means that the shark may be ready to attack. 
Divers have learned to avoid and carefully retreat from sharks with their pectoral fins in this position. Dorsal fin. Nothing strikes fear in the heart of a swimmer more than the thought of a shark's dorsal fin breaking the surface of the water nearby. This highly recognizable fin acts like a sailboat's keel, stabilizing the shark's body when it is moving through the water. Without the dorsal fin, the shark would begin turning to one side, something known as side slipping. Unlike a shark's other fins, the dorsal fin is stiff and immovable. It is also considered a delicacy in dishes such as shark fin soup. Pelvic fins. Second dorsal fin. Anal fin. Caudal fin. The shark's tail, or caudal fin, is used to propel the shark forward in the water. In almost all sharks, the upper lobe of the tail is larger than the lower lobe. The longer tail lobe helps push the shark's body downward into the water. For support, a long extension of the backbone extends up and back through the upper lobe of the tail. The size and shape of a shark's tail differ from species to species. Most slower-moving sharks have larger upper tail lobes. For example, the bottom-dwelling cat shark has a long, flat upper lobe, while the great white and mako sharks have upper and lower lobes that are equal in size. This is the sign of a fast, efficient swimmer. The thresher shark has an extremely long upper lobe that is actually used to slash its prey. Brain. Shark brain. For many years it was thought that sharks had simple primitive brains. Yet recently scientists have shown that many sharks have large capable brains, especially when compared to other vertebrates. Certain sharks have even demonstrated the ability to learn simple tasks. A shark's brain is the center of a complex system of nerves and senses. Millions of tiny electrical messages are transmitted to the brain from all over the shark's body. For instance, the shark's eyes are constantly sending information to the brain about what is visible to the shark. Electrical sensors in the shark's face transmit information about the electrical fields being created by other animals in the water. At the same time this is happening, the shark's brain is sending messages out to the different parts of the body, instructing them what to do. Brains differ greatly in size and complexity from one shark species to the next. Large, fast-moving sharks like the hammerhead and dusky shark have bigger brains, probably because they spend more time hunting and tracking prey. Slower, bottom-dwelling sharks, which find most of their food in one place, generally have smaller brains. Shark brains are divided into three large segments, a forebrain, a midbrain, and a hindbrain. Each of these segments is responsible for controlling a different part of the shark's bodily functions. Olfactory bull. Gills. Heart. Like other fish hearts, the shark heart is made of four chambers composed of a powerful muscular tissue. The chambers work together to collect blood from the shark's body, then pump it to the gills where it is enriched with oxygen. Once the blood has passed through the gills, it is pumped back out to the shark's body. Blood vessels, known as veins, transport the blood from the shark's body to the heart. Vessels known as arteries carry the blood out of the heart to the gills, then back to the different parts of the shark. The size of the heart depends on the kind of shark it belongs to. Highly active sharks, such as the mako or gray shark, have larger hearts than do slower sharks, which remain in a small area. Stomach. All sharks are big eaters. And because they are big eaters, they need a large stomach to hold their food. Some sharks keep more than just food in their stomach. The stomachs of many captured sharks have included items such as cans, shoes, even tires. Most sharks eat once every one or two days. It usually takes 24 hours for a shark to fully digest its food. Some sharks, like the great white shark, can eat a single enormous meal and then wait as much as two months before feeding again. Once a shark's food is swallowed, it enters the stomach where it is broken down by digestive enzymes into small pieces that are more easily digested. After the food moves through the stomach, it passes into the shark's intestine, where much of it is absorbed by the shark's blood and used as fuel for the shark's physical activities. Just below the shark's stomach is its liver. Almost all sharks have an enormous liver to help them remain buoyant in the water. Unlike other fish, sharks do not have a swim bladder, which helps to keep a fish's body stable in the water. To make up for this, the shark's large liver is filled with oil that is lighter than water so the shark actually can float. Some sharks have livers that weigh as much as 200 pounds. Kidney Intestine Liver
reproductive organ. Most sharks give birth to live young rather than lay eggs as most fish do. Scientists know very little about the mating habits of sharks. Since sharks range over such wide areas of ocean, it must take a long time for male and female sharks to find one another. When they do, the male chases the female, often biting her tail to get her interested in mating. Once the male catches the female, he fertilizes her eggs by inserting one of his fins, known as a clasper, into an opening in the female's body. In most shark species, the fertilized eggs reside inside a cavity in the female's body, known as an oviduct. Safe inside the oviduct, the shark embryo is nourished by a yolk sac attached to its body. Some shark embryos actually feed on unfertilized eggs inside the female's body. After a period of four to eight months, the embryos hatch but continue to remain inside the oviduct while the baby shark keeps growing. Eventually, the female shark gives birth to live baby sharks. Unlike mammals, sharks do not care for their young. Once they are born, baby sharks swim away to fend for themselves. A small number of sharks, like the dogfish or swell shark, reproduce by laying eggs. Just after the female's eggs are fertilized, they are covered with a leathery shell which resembles a small purse. The egg is then deposited in a safe spot on the sea floor, where it will remain for as long as a year. Safe inside the shell, the shark embryo lives off a yolk sac that is connected to its body by an umbilical cord. When the shark finally hatches from its egg, it is quite vulnerable to attack by predators and must quickly find a hiding place until it is larger.